Hi, my name is Brian Kaffel and welcome to this week's Ask Brian part of our weekly newsletter. So this week I'm going to address a question that I get quite a bit, um, which is to contrast R versus Python and people ask me which one they should learn and so on. So I've already done a video uh, comparing R and Python and, uh, you know, I think I came to the conclusion there that, you know, if you're heading more into the data engineering systems administration space, if you ha if there's some component of that in your job, you might prioritize learning Python first. And if you're more on the data analysis end of things, then you might prioritize learning R first. Now, of course, there are caveats to all of this. So in my uh, work in statistics, almost everyone uses R. So it makes sense when I'm doing that kind of work to devote my energy to R. However, in, in a related research endeavor I do, I'm involved in, I work in neuroimaging. And in neuroimaging, R is a distant third or fourth most popular language behind MATLAB and Python. So there would make a lot more sense for me to devote my energy to learning Python or, or MATLAB. So of course, you know, you can't have one rule that suggests what you should prioritize in, ter in terms of learning languages. So uh, what I wanted to talk about instead of R versus Python, I think, you know, I've, I'll link to the video so you can get some of the discussion between uh, contrasting the two languages. Uh, but instead, I wanted to talk about learning um, sort of implementation versus foundation. And so uh, Hillary Parker just wrote this great piece about opinionated data analysis. And, and the idea is about, um, you know, it, I, you know, I, when I read it, it, it said, you know, have some opinion about implementation, not just about foundation. It was a very thoughtful piece. And when you learn a programming language and you learn the tools of a programming language, you really are learning a lot about implementation and implementation science. Um, but there is also the foundation uh, that underlies these tools. So instead, in instead of learning R or Python, you could ask yourself, do you know, do I really, um, you know, the differences of things like recursion versus recursion versus iteration, and do I understand things like um, um, you know, order, uh, computational order and that sort of thing. Uh, if I'm thinking about data analysis, you know, I could talk about, you know, how do I, how do I run regression, regression in, uh, R or Python, you might ask that question, or you might alternatively learn about things like projections or least squares or other aspects of linear models and regression that would teach you about it. So uh, instead of talking about R versus Python, I'm hoping to really talk a little bit about, you know, how much time you should devote in implementation versus foundation. Now in academics, where I exist, especially in the statistics world, we almost fetishize foundations in, in theory and to the point uh, where we really have a very anemic presence in implementation and teaching implementation and that sort of thing, especially at the sort of high end graduate levels where I exist. Uh, so in, in those spaces, it, you know, probably I would say you're, you're for sure going to get foundation and you might want to think about learning some implementation stuff as well. Now, uh, what I often see in many industry, uh, many people working in industry is somewhat of the opposite is a, a lot of knowledge of implementation or maybe a little less so on the foundation. And then if you're in that circumstance, you might want to devote some energy instead of learning R better or learning Python better, but also learning some programming theory basics or some statistical uh, theory basics. And that stuff is very, you know, it's, it's important because for one thing, it helps, makes your knowledge very portable when you move to a new job and they don't use R, they use something else. Um, the foundation will stay the same and you'll just have to learn a new implementation. And uh, 
uh, learning a new implementation when you understand the foundation is much easier. If you know a little bit about the basics and theory underlying relational databases, then it doesn't matter which specific implementation of Postgres or whatever, uh, uh, you know, MySQL or whatever that you learn, uh, you know, you, you'll be able to switch between them much more quickly. So at any rate, my, my, um, my point for for this discussion in general is, you know, in terms of the many questions I get asking me whether or not I should learn R versus Python, I think, you know, uh, spend some time thinking about which of these two implementations you want to learn, but then also spend some time thinking about, well, should I also devote some some extra effort to learning the foundations of some of the things I want to do better? Should I learn a little bit more about the foundations of machine learning if the reason I want to learn R or Python is to apply machine learning? Or should I learn a little bit more about the foundations of statistics if what I want to do is learn R or Python to do statistics? Or the foundations of databases if I want to use them to query databases and that sort of thing. Okay, so um, this was just a slightly different take on a question that we've talked about a couple times already in this series, uh, but hopefully it gives you some guidance uh, about you know, where to start. And, uh, you know, I think one point I haven't made yet is for programming, I would definitely say if you've never programmed before, the first thing you want to learn is some very basic implementation stuff. You just want to get programs to run, scripts to run, and that, that'll be very rewarding and that'll get you hooked. And then after you can get, get over that hurdle, then you want to learn some programming foundations for sure. Uh, th that's so useful at that point. And then after you've done those two things, then you want to start searching out for specific implementations to learn to, to gain expertise. Okay, well, I hope you found this useful. Uh, that's at least how I think about these things. Uh, go and read Hillary Parker's piece. It's really nice. And it really, I think it's kind of a nice call for those of us, especially in academics, to, to spend some time thinking about implementation science and opinionated data analysis uh, in, a, in a way that we haven't really done so far. All right. Well, we'll see you next week and uh, keep those questions coming.